Well, I've got myself another blowtorch here. Uh, it's quite an old one, it's uh, pre-World War II and it's from uh, Hanel. And <clears throat> it's, uh, I bought it because it has this nice 45 degree angle which is very good in uh, hard to get to places. Um, and when I bought it, I've, uh, I've wondered what this all is about. So this in the middle is like uh, adjusting your carburetor. It adjusts how much air gets through and you can adjust the flame uh, according to the heat you might need. And um, this here, I didn't quite get round to it. It is not uh, some safety equipment for not touching it because it also gets awfully hot. Um, it doesn't seem of any purpose of stability because there is a huge amount of play on the front. So um, what I've made myself is filed a little notch in the front and I've uh, drilled and tapped a hole to fit a pin in here. Then I did the same on an old soldering iron I had from my great granddad. Right in here I drilled a hole. And then this will just lay on top of here. And later, when the flame is on, this front copper block will get heated up and uh, then you can start soldering with this. So that's what this video is about. The soldering, how it was done in the old times. Just a little thing I wanted to show you. When I had this torch new, um, it was working all right, but the pump was kept coming out. Even after replacing all the seals around, it just kept coming out. And then I saw that the check valve on this is, well, let's be honest, it's not making sense to me because it seems to have been the wrong way around. So you couldn't pump pressure in, but pressure could get from the tank into the pump. So I didn't find any way to fix that, and I didn't find any schematics or something on YouTube, which uh, on uh, the internet, which may have gotten me any clues. So you know what I had to do was machine a new check valve for this, and I copied the principle of my other blowtorch that I have. So it's basically the same check valve inside there now, and that works quite well. soldering iron on. Granddad's toolbox. These are all the tools that my great granddad had back then as a locksmith. And down in here, we've got his old soldering tin, as you can tell because it's really soft. And um, here he's got another one, that's the one I, I will use. So um, let's take that. We'll try soldering these two pieces of uh, brass rod together.
All right, well, that has worked, but uh, it's pretty crooked. So we'll heat it up one more time and then try again. This isn't working too well, so we'll just try the other old-time soldering method that we have. That's this guy here. There you go, a matter of seconds. And yes, I did burn a pretty good black spot into the table there, but you know what, I don't care. So um, just to show that this thing has a place, we'll try and solder something maybe a little bit smaller, like two wires or something. We'll find something, right? Okay, here we have two pieces of copper wire that we shall now unite for eternity. your proof of concept that this will also work for precision electronics. Um, I've had a bit of a problem with all this dross here that you can see this yellowish stuff. Maybe there's some kind of stuff that uh, prevents ha that from happening. And just in case that thing is a little bit overkill, I've also got this small one. Just a size comparison. This is quite a lot smaller and quite a bit more accurate than this huge chunk of copper. Um, you know, it's quite a tedious thing, and I don't think I'll be doing it too often, but um, you just saw it did work, and um, people did it like th that way for hundreds of years. So I thought I might, I might have a try at it. What you witnessed there with the blowtorch, I didn't know that thing had so much oomph. It was Maybe the, the nozzle cleaned out or something, but 
quite a bit frightening, actually. Okay, that's it for old time soldering. I just thought I'd show you this little contraption that I built. Looks pretty neat. Uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.